Hey, it's Michael Lipinski again, Smokey the Bear, smoking away like a banshee. Um, continuing on with explaining 3D and 2D datum extents. Datum objects, especially grids and levels, have two types of extents, 3D analytic and 2D graphic. These extents are expressed as grips that are shown at the endpoints of the grids and levels in plans, sections, and elevations. The analytic grips control the extents of the datum across the entire project in all views. The analytic grip is shown as an open circle, and the indicator displays as 3D as shown in this figure. So now, if I go to the south elevation of this template that I opened, the CO2-grids-start.rvt elevation south, I should say, the CO2-grids-start.rvt practice file that we downloaded, you'll see that if I go to the, uh, the level here, and what it's saying, that uh, if you click it, you'll notice that there is um, a circle, and you'll notice that there's a 2D and a 3D indicator. All of these right now are set, oh, that one was set to 2D, they're set to 3D. Now, if you notice, here's our 3D view, and if I double click the mouse wheel down to the extents, I don't see anything whatsoever. And that's important to note because uh, let's go through this and you'll see why it'll become apparent to you. Um, if you want to adjust the 2D extents of your datum in only the current view, click the 3D icon and it will change to 2D. You can then modify the 2D extents of the datum object without affecting the 3D extents. We'll explore this further in an exercise later in this section. Datum objects are visible only in views that intersect their 3D extents. The elevation in figure 2.27 shows four grids. Right here. And, four level, and three levels. Four in the book with three here. Grid lines three and four are not visible on levels three and four because their 3D extents are not intersected at those levels. Well, that's not true because they are here. But what I wanted to show you about these grips is that, like I said, I have, I have this project template uh, open, and I have views that I opened that I tiled. I have level one, level two, a, three dimension, a 3D layer, a 3D uh, view, the south elevation, and level three. What that's saying is that if I go here, I click on this particular uh, grid line, which, as you can see, is highlighted in each of the other views. I grab this little grip down here, I drag it up. Notice the level one and level two floor plans to the left when I let this go. You notice that because it was locked and was anchored and constrained, having a parametric relationship with each other, all of them now are, were manipulated to only be within the threshold of the level three, of level three. If I undo that, you'll see how I redo it. You'll see what I mean, man. That's what I'm trying to convey to you. The datum objects are, only, are visible only in the views that intersect at 3D extents. The elevation in figure 27, like I just showed you, grid lines 3 and 4 are not visible on levels 3 and 4 because the 3D extents are not intersecting those levels. So again, if I went here, I took this up to here. That's all of them, but now if I undid that, and I anchored, uh, unanchored this one, I dragged it up. It's no longer visible on any of the floor plans. I undo that, redo it. You'll see the parametric bidirectional relationship between all the views. It's important. It's very important to note. It doesn't work that way in AutoCAD. Yeah, it's backwards. Now, in order to wrap your mind around explaining 3D and 2D data elements, and in this this abyss of absence of light within this um, vacuum of space that we're working in, you know, we're going to have to adjust these things from time to time. Now, that being said, you can use the 3D and 2D extents to your liking in any view. The 3D extents of the grid lines extend through level 1 and 2, but the 2D extents are set above level 2. This means that the grid datum would still be visible in both levels, even though it looks like they do not intersect the levels. When you move a datum object one way or another, content is going to respond. 
If you move a level, walls and furniture are going to move accordingly. If you move a grid, structural elements associated with the grid will relocate. I need a massage. And if you move references, the elements associated with them will update. Therefore, you will often constrain or pin datum objects in order to restrict their movement as your project is starting to develop. Let's continue with the exercise from this section, creating and duplicating levels, and edit the to the extents for one of the levels you copied. Remember that although the, this exercise uses levels, these methods can be applied to grids as well. Here are the steps. Open the south elevation view again. You'll notice that the label for level 3 is slightly overlapping the label for level 2B because they are relatively close. You'll need to adjust the to the extent of level 3. Select level 3 and you'll see two items at the right endpoint with which you'll need to interact. The 3D indicator and the lock symbol. First, click the lock symbol to unlock the right endpoint. This will allow you to move the endpoint for the selected level without affecting all the other levels. Click the 3D indicator so that it changes to 2D. Now you are ready to modify the 2D extent of the level. Drag the 2D extent grip, the solid circle, to the right. This, the result should look like the image I'm about to show you. So what it's saying is that if indeed this, let's say down here, and you had something like that, you could unlock this, grab this independently of the other ones, in this view only, and drag it over in this view only in the south elevation. Now, as you can see, you can make this a little more aesthetically pleasing with, again, the plumber's elbow. So these are the types of things that you're going to have to come to understand so that you can better uh, encompass and be able to constrain, restrict, manipulate, and sculpt um, your canvas, your molded piece of clay. Whatever it is you're looking to design, your pump, your carburetor, uh, your engine block, your limited slip differential, limited slip differential. You could look at it like that. You could look at it like that. Whatever you want to design. Design your own limited slip differential. Derive. Derive. I'm getting there. Arrive late. Okay, so now, um, we took a look at that, and that, and that kind of encompasses basics, the basics of that, and there's much more to, ex to explore um, with these levels and grids, and um, we're going to continue on to do that. Propagating extents, propagation, propaganda, Goebbels, <laughs> and anyone, in any event, propagating extents. Quite often, you will adjust the extents of datum objects that need to be replicated in several other views. Unfortunately, there is a tool to help you accomplish this, propagating extents. Propagation delay. If you look up propagation, you'll see propagation is an important aspect of science. Let's take a look. Propagation for a second. If we can get a, we, if we can get our website going, if we can't, we're going to be on pause. Hold on. Propagate. 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 With reference to motion, light, sound, etc., transmit or be transmitted in a particular direction through a medium. Breed specimens of a plant or animal by natural processes from the parent stock. Of a plant or animal reproduced by natural processes. Spread and promote an idea, theory, etc. widely. And again, I'm not going to get into usage, sense usage, but you get the point. You get the point. We're going to now propagate extents. The Propagate Extents tool pushes any modifications you apply to a datum object from one view to other parallel views of your choosing. This tool does not work well on levels because the parallel views are essentially mirrored views of each other. For example, the orientation of the south elevation is the opposite of the north elevation. <laughs> Therefore, if you make a change to the extents at the right end of a level in the south elevation, those changes would be propagated to the left end in the north elevation. Box trolls. The best way to apply the propagate extents tool is with the 2D extents at grids. Why only the 2D extents? Because changing the 3D extents affects the datum object throughout the project, independent of any specific view, because it's the analytical grid. 
I think, <laughs> to a certain extent. It's educational assessment. Because changing the 3D extents affects the datum objects throughout the project, independent of any specific view, let's examine, let's examine this behavior with a quick reference. Legacy split. Download and open the grid start.rvt file from this book's webpage, and then activate the south elevation. You will see three level grids and uh, three levels and four grids. Select grid three and click the 3D indicator at the bottom endpoint. Notice that the lock symbol turns off automatically, allowing you to immediately adjust the graphic extents of the grid. Drag the 2D extent of grid 3 up towards the top. Repeat this process before so that the results look like the image shown in 2.3.1. The line weight of the grid lines has been increased for clarity. Before you continue, open the level 1 and level 2 floor plans and observe that grids 3 and 4 are still visible. If you had adjusted the 3D extents of the grids in the south elevation view, those changes will be reflected in the other views. We're using this method because we want to maintain the 3D extents but modify the 2D extents only in the south elevation view. That's what I just did. And um, we'll do it again, again, and again over the course of working on this project. How much of it you absorbed, we, we, we we're going we're gonna to pause briefly, but we're going to eventually, as a collective unit, have to go back and do that again, you and I included, or me talking to the wall. So that being said, um, we did that. Now, blah, 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 propagating the extents. Now, return to the south elevation view, and select grid 3 floor while pressing the control key. From the contextual tab in the ribbon, click the Propagate Extents button. The dialog box will appear as shown right now. So if I go to these levels right here, and I select both of these with a dragging uh, touch box from right to left, pick, hold, drag, let go, left mouse button. You'll notice that in the, um, the in the context of invoking you know, in, in the context of selecting those levels, the modify tab had opened up, and the green contextual ribbon now has given us a transparent um, commands that we can invoke and and transparently within the context of a command um, implement, and that therein is the propagate extents, which reads as copies the extents and appearance of data elements to parallel views. There's no connection between the appearance of the data and elements in multiple views. If you modify a data extent in one view, you can use propagate extents, again, to replicate the change in other parallel views. Now, that's a lot of words. So what that means is hit the propagate extents button after you select them, and you'll notice that a dialog box will pop up, and you'll see elevation north is, um, is the only one that um, will allow us to uh, propagate to because we uh, are only showing views with the same scale as current. So now, if we click that, you'll notice that you go up to level three, save the project, and propagation extents will have been implemented. Now, Resetting or maximizing 3D extents. Two commands you might need when adjusting data object extents are ones that give you the ability to reset or maximize the 3D extents. These commands are available in the context menu when you have a data object selected. To reset to 3D extents, command allows you to reset any graphic extent modification back to the data analytic extents. Let's apply this command in the continued exercise file. So I want to uh, do this again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and change this to 2D. I'm going to select it. I'm going to propagate extents. And I'm going to change it to elevation north. Now, to reset it, I would basically reset to 3D extents. Or I would maximize to 3D extents. As you can see, do the same thing with this one. Reset the 3D extents, maximize 3D extents. Okay, so that's the difference. Now, notice nothing is in the analytical model, the analytical grid. So let's just really quickly grab a wall and bring this in here and draw it between these grid lines, not on the grid lines, but between them. You'll notice the bi-directional associativity of the program 
because now the wall's drawn. But now you don't really see anything here. Where's that grid? Where's that grid, the three-dimensional analytical grid? Well, what we talked about earlier in the view control bar, each one of these views have, has a view control bar. Each one of these views. Now, if you, as you select a view, you have control of the view uh, here as well as here. So now what do we talk about? Um, temporarily hidden objects and such. Um, reveal hidden, hidden objects and such, remember? We talked about revealing hidden elements. Now what do we see in this 3D analytical model? We see the project base point, the project survey point, as well as the three-dimensional analytical grid, and it's red. RGB, red, green, green, blue, the primary colors. So it plays into it. All of, the, all of these words that I'm pulling, I'm, 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 this nomenclature um, is, is pertinent. Propagation delay is important. We all, we're all, some of us slow down eventually, right? Propag propagation delay is the length of time taken for the quantity of, of interest to reach its destination. It can relate to networking, electronics, or physics. Hold time is the minimum interval required for the logic level to remain on the input after triggering edge of the clock pulse. That's important because the next chapter you're going to love. You're actually going to love um, using reference planes. I'm going to stop it there, burn it to the disk, and I'm going to upload it and share it. I'm probably sharing it already within the context of network peering groups hierarchy. So uh, I don't want to get uh, too far off on a tangent. So I'm going to say F10. I'm going to control F10.